you. God took you and He formed man of the dust of the earth. And He breathed. What, was, what is He wanting? What was He symbolizing? He said, Satan, you messed up. But I'm going to create an image that's going to reflect the glory that you used to reflect. Yeah. And I'm going to breathe breath into them, but they're not going to withhold that breath. They're going to give it back to me. Yeah. So when David said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord, he was saying, I'm going to give back the very thing that breathed life into my being. I'm going to give breath. I'm going to give the only thing that keeps me alive, that sustains my being, that keeps my blood flowing. That's why it's vital to give our praise not through song, not through musical instruments, but it's vital that we give our praise back from us. Because some of you can't sing tonight. That's not a downside to you. Praise God. I can tell you now, there's some people I don't want to hear sing. But I do want to hear them praise. Because that's something everybody can do. So one more time, can we give our praise unto the Lord tonight? Can we lift our voices, not just a hand clap, but can we lift our voices into Him? I want to return back to you, God, what you gave me. When there was nothing else, when, when money wasn't formulated, God. God, when there was sick, when clothes wasn't formulated in the beginning, God, when material things were not formulated and I would not have the possession of them, God. When all I had was my breath and my sanity, God, I want to give you back my breath. I want to give it back to you tonight. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight Amen. and to worship with God's people. I do want to say without going, without taking too much time, I love your pastor and his wife. And I hate that she's not here tonight. And uh, we will definitely be praying for her. But we love this family. We love this church. Uh, we have connected with you guys. And we love you very, very much. Amen. So John chapter 9. Beginning at verse 1. John chapter 9. Verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honestly, I love my wife and our little boys. Thankful for them. Uh, I wouldn't be the man I am today without her. She's helped me. And that when God, in the beginning, God gave a help meet to Adam. He designed for every man to have a help meet. And God gave me my rib back. Praise God. I'm thankful for my help meet. She's such a wonderful, wonderful lady. And uh, I'm just going to tell a little story on her real quick. It wasn't really not on her. Uh, but um, I, had, we were, I was go, traveling to a revival and she wasn't able to go with me. And uh, a young man was traveling with me, a young minister. He knows my wife and we're uh, somewhat connected to their family pretty close. And uh, He said, your wife just has this humble spirit. and She's just so meek and, 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 and so uh, just, uh, just, just got a wonderful spirit about her. And uh, he looked at me. He put me in a hard spot. I was agreeing with him all the way up until he said this. He said, does your wife ever get mad? <laughs> she wasn't there to defend herself. And I said, brother, I'm not going to answer that question because I don't want to taint your view of my wife. <laughs> I love my wife tonight. She's such a beautiful, beautiful lady of God, and I'm thankful for her and her support. John chapter 9, verse 1. The Bible says, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he, hath, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Hallelujah. Tonight, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I don't know how long I'll be. Probably not too long. 
But I want to preach for a few moments on this thought tonight. The steps that led to my, you fill in the blank. Whatever you need tonight. Victory, healing, salvation, deliverance, whatever it is. Thank you. Tonight I want to preach the steps that led to my, whatever you need. God, I ask you today that you would minister in this place. I'm asking you, Lord, to take your word that's already anointed. God, let it be distributed in this place tonight. I pray tonight, Lord, that you would move up and down these aisles, that your anointing would fill this house. Lord, that everything that we do in this place will be pleasing unto you. I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint my mind, my lips of clay tonight to speak what thus saith the word of the Lord. And God, I'm asking you to anoint your people that we would receive with hearts open. And God, with our hearts abandoned, God, that we would give you back what you have rightfully deserved. And God, we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you glory and honor. In the name of Jesus we pray And everybody say amen, amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord as you're being seated tonight amen. John chapter 9 The writer of John John begins to depict the story of a man That was blind from his birth this man, as the conversation between the disciples began, they were intrigued by his blindness. Normally in that day when uh, someone was diseased, it was because of something they had done. Normally when a disease uh, struck, and we know this from the Old Testament, when uh, Moses, uh, when Aaron and, and Miriam come up against Moses, the Lord struck Miriam with leprosy. Normally disease would somehow in that day be connected uh, to some kind of sin or some kind of thing uh, that that person had done to deserve uh, what they were ill with. But this particular subject, this man uh, uh, that was there in John chapter 9, the disciples began to in ask uh, each other what, and ask Jesus, what has this man done to deserve uh, to be blind? Did his mama sin? Did his daddy sin? Did he sin? What, what was the case? And Jesus said, uh, no, it's not because of the sin of his mother. It's not because of the sin of his father. It's not because uh, of his own sin. Uh, but this man is blind because uh, that the works of God can be done uh, in his life. What Jesus was saying was, uh, this man is facing this illness uh, so that God could get glory. So many times we walk through life and we don't understand the situations that we're up against. We walk through life with questions that are so unknown to us. We walk through life and face situations that make no sense to anyone else around us. It seems that every time we try our best and we're doing our best to live for God and be faithful, it seems like at every turn sometimes that we're hit with opposition. We're hit with obstacles that we don't understand. We're hit with circumstances that make no sense at all. And sometimes it makes us step back and examine ourselves and say, God, what did I do to deserve what's happening right now? God, what did I do to deserve the circumstance that I'm facing? Lord, what did I do? What is it something that I did in my past? Is it something uh, that I did just what, what is it Lord it doesn't make sense and sometimes the enemy wants us to drag up those things uh, of yesterday but can I tell you uh, that's the tactic you need to be aware of uh, because once it's under the blood uh, and once it's been repented of uh, the enemy cannot control you by that uh, unless you go and pull it out from under the blood and so this man just as this man is and the questions arise and people look at us from the outside looking in and they see the circumstances that we face and they see the situations that we're up against and no doubt some are looking on the outside and they're saying oh they messed up somewhere somewhere along the way they made a mistake or the Lord wouldn't be doing this to them can I tell you people can look on the outside on the outside looking in and judge you but can I tell you you're the one that knows what you've been doing you're the one that knows how you've been living. You're the one that knows you've been praying.
praying. You're the one that knows you've been fasting. You're the one that knows you've been faithful. Just because you're up against opposition doesn't mean you've done something wrong, honey. I've come to tell somebody in this house the enemy's going to attack those who he feels is a threat to his kingdom. The enemy's going to come against those who he feels like is going to threaten the work that he's trying to set up. Come on, I tell you right now, the enemy doesn't like what's going on around Brandon, Mississippi. He doesn't like one bit of people praying back through. He doesn't like one bit people being buried in the name of Jesus. So what he's going to do is he's going to rise up and he's going to attack you. He's going to rise up and he's going to come and try to make his way in your home. And it's not because of anything that you've done. But can I tell you when those moments arise, you and I need to stay Stand up and say, this is going to be a, a work of God. This is going to bring glory yes, unto God. Yes, Amen. We can't control the situations that we face, but we can control our response to the situations that we face. I'm going to tell you right now, if you choose to sit there and wallow in the mully groves, if you choose to sit there and have a pity party all by yourself, you are not going to see victory. But if you'll choose to say, Lord, this is the day that you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This I've got nothing but praise for you. When I rise up in the morning, I'm going to praise you. When I lay my head down at night to rest, I'm going to praise you. Circumstances don't dictate my praise. Situations don't dictate my worship. Trials don't dictate my faithfulness. But you know what they should do? They ought to push me to praise more. They ought to push me to pray more. They ought to... Talk about the steps that lead to your whatever it is you need. Never quite preached like this before. I've never left a blank on the end of a message title. The day as we were getting ready and we were trying to get, I was trying to get the mind of God for this service. I, this has been on my mind all day today. And it was almost like, Lord, I could put a, I could put a fancy title to it. But you know what? I feel like the Lord just really dealt with me and said, you need to leave it open so that they can identify with me what's going on in their world. Sometimes self-identification of what we're going through brings victory a lot sooner than what we would if somebody just tried to live. Well, I need victory. Well, there's a lot of us in here that needs victory. Well, I need to live. There's a lot of us in here that needs to live. Can I tell you tonight? You need to stand up and say, God, I identify in the spirit. I identify, God, this is what I'm going through. I don't want some, I want to make this personal. I want you to know, God, that although my situations seem hard and although my situations seem bleak, I want you to know I'm still in your house and I've still got praise. I've still got a little bit of worship left in me. I still got something down on the inside. Hey, I'm going to let it out. So, this blind man, Jesus, comes to him. After they have a, a dialogue of discussion, Jesus said, I'm the light, and, and all these things. He comes so that the work of, work of God could be done, and all of these things, are, this conversation is going on. But Jesus just stops after his conversation, and he looks at the blind man. And the blind man knows he's blind. Everybody else knows he's blind. And Jesus pegs it. Says, come here. So, I don't know how, what happened, what transpired, or if Jesus went to him, or what happened. But I can tell you that the Bible says that Jesus stooped down on the ground, and the same dust that he formulated yours and my body, he spit upon that and made mud balls and stuck them in the eye sockets of a blind man. What a miracle. Can I tell you tonight that some of us, we expect God to do a miracle one way. And we've missed the miracle because God's trying to do it another way. I don't want to put God in a box that says, God, you got to do it this way or it's not going to happen. No, I want to say, God, I'm here. Whatever it is, however you're going to do it, as long as you're going to do it through me, I'm okay with it. If I've got to step out and do something crazy, I'll do it. If I've got to step out and do whatever you're telling me, it does not matter, Lord. 
to me as long as I'm in your will, as long as I get deliverance, as long as I get victory, as long as I leave with peace of mind, as long as I leave with joy, as long as I leave full of the Holy Ghost, it doesn't matter what you ask me to do, I'm going to do it because I'm desperate for a change in my world. Yeah. Yeah. So, this blind man, I'm looking for a good blind man tonight. I can't find one. Praise God. Brother, come help me. You just come help me. You just, you a prime subject there. Come on here and help me. This blind man, where's that towel, brother, that you had? Can I use it for a second? It's a lot bigger than my towel. I'm not. Oh, well, I'm not going to say I'm not, brother. Take your glasses off. I'm going to hold it like that right there. I'm going to hold it like that right there. Okay. This blind man could not see where he was going. Okay. Listen to this. Jesus said, after he had spit on the ground, formulated some mud balls, put them on this man's eyes, the next command, it was, it's so, it's just, it, I mean, in our thinking, we're like, why in the world? I mean, don't, don't you think, don't you think this man's blind? Don't you know that he can't see where he's going? And he said, go wash. That's what some of you are doing tonight. God's saying, go. And we're like, what? Don't you see where I am? Don't you see what I'm going through? Don't you understand my circumstances? Go wash. I can't even hardly see my way through with all the things that's going on in my world. And Jesus said, look, all I want you to do is go wash. I read some things today on this story and one of the things that I read was that this man this 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 getting to where he needed to go was not an easy task because no doubt everywhere in the scripture that we read there's multitudes of people thronging Jesus so the first thing he had to deal with was the crowd or his blindness in the crowd. The second thing he had to do was the crowd. The third thing was he had to make his way through. And so he, he said, Jesus said, go wash. Guess what he does? He goes. The bot, this, this person said, of his best calculation, that it was about a thousand yards from where he was to the pool. Now, brother, go. Uh-huh. Keep walking. Whoa. Along the way, along the way, just come back over here. Along the way, I can imagine, just stand there, I don't want you to follow. I can imagine along the way that this man stumbled and failed. I can imagine in that thousand yards to the pool, there was probably a time he fell on his knees and scuffed his knee up. On the way to the pool, I'm sure there might have been times that he ran into somebody or in, some, in their negligence, somebody ran into him along the way. Maybe he got knocked down and stepped on by the crowd that was surrounding him. But you know what this blind man said? It doesn't matter how many times I'm knocked down. It doesn't matter who steps on me along the way. It, on, I'm preaching to somebody in this house. You've been saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to get my victory. It seems like every time I turn around, I'm being stepped on. Every time I, I turn around, I'm tripping up. Every time I turn around, I'm hitting the ground. And the Lord says, yeah, you may have fallen. You may have scut your knee along the way. You might have been stepped on while you were down. But do you have enough in you to get back up and get the... Your victory's there. You can come out of this circumstance, but you got to have enough stability in you that says, I'm getting back up. I'm getting back up. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to fast again. I'm going to worship. Come on, let's hear it. Come on. I'm going to take the steps. If I trip up somewhere, if I fall somewhere, I'm getting back up again. Thousand yards, I can tell you right now, it wasn't an easy journey. Ask him, wasn't easy, was it? Couldn't see where you're going. 
pitch black. Sometimes it's that way in our world. It's just like every time we turn around, all we can see is the darkness. All we can see is that darkness encroaches in upon every plan that we've ever made. All we see sometimes is the broken dreams, the shattered things in our world. And we look at them and we say, God, how in the world are you going to be able to put back together those I trip and fall and my dreams they shattered. I tripped and fell and my life it was broken into pieces. God, I don't understand why. And the Lord simply sent me here to tell you tonight there's some steps you got to take to get to what you need. But if you'll take those steps, you'll walk in victory. If you'll take those steps, you'll get your healing. If you'll take those steps, you'll see personal revival in your world. If you'll take those steps, you'll see the things that you've been asking God for. Hallelujah. Wasn't easy. Quite frankly, I believe some of us tonight, I don't know how I would have responded be quite honest with you. Blind. And Jesus says go. I'd like to think that I'd have jumped up and tried to do my best to get there. Maybe somewhere along the way, after he fell a few times, maybe he said, maybe he got a hold of somebody. Hey brother, could you lead me to that pool? Could you help me get there? Maybe after he'd fallen a few times, scuffed up his knees a little bit, and he made kind of maybe he got stepped on. Maybe somewhere along the way he finally just said, "You know what? I know that I know one thing. There's strength in unity. So God, if I gotta have somebody help me get there, I'm not too ashamed of my problem to ask somebody to pray for me. I'm not too ashamed of what I'm going through to trust a sister or a brother and ask them to help me pray and ask them to help me break through. Can I?" tell you the Bible says in Psalms 133 and 1 behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in you God whatever it takes unify me with somebody whatever it takes unify me Lord if I need help to get my miracle God help me find somebody that's going to help me get the deliverance that I need you know what none of us in this building tonight are a product of ourselves we're a product of somebody's prayers we're a product of somebody's sacrifice we're a product of somebody's diligent searching of God Somebody prayed me to where I am. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Think back. Why are you here? That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Who was it that brought you to the house of God? Who was it that asked you to come and be a business with them? Who was it that prayed for you day in and day out? I can tell you who it was for me. I heard my mama many nights crying out to God, God, save my boy. God, you made him promise after promise. I've heard my daddy say, God, you're going to have to save my boys. I've heard him pray for my brothers. I've heard him pray. My mama pray, God, they're in sin, but Lord, you're able to bring them out. Can I tell you, I'm standing here preaching the word of God to you tonight because my mama and my daddy refused to quit praying. Can I tell you, you may feel like, oh, it's hopeless, it's useless. Just stop praying. I'm just going to stop this going to give up. Can I tell you, don't give up. Uh, your prayers are going to be answered. Uh, there's just some steps it's going to take to get there. Uh, yeah, it may look like they're falling down uh, in the miry clay. Uh, it may feel like they're going, they're going to seek uh, in their despair and their demise. But can I tell you, your prayers is what's going to bring them out. Uh, your prayers is what's going to see, see the deliverance in their world. Uh, your prayers is what's going to make the difference. God help me help me take the steps that I need to that's going to lead me it's not going to be easy brothers and sisters I know it's simple tonight I'm telling you I'm here to tell somebody right now I'm the Holy Ghost you're saying oh it's so hard I don't know how much more I can take I'm telling you keep praying 
Pine together with somebody. God's counting on you to make it. God's counting on you to come through. There's somebody that's dependent on you. You may not see them. You may not hear. Uh, you may not know that they're looking up to you, but there's somebody looking up to you uh, that's saying if they can come through this, uh, then I know God can bring me out of what I'm in. God's saying, hey, I want to bring you out. Can you trust me? I want to deliver you. Can you trust me? I want to fill you up uh, to your cup running over. Do you trust me? Can you depend on me? I know it don't make sense right now. I know there's silence and it seems like no everywhere you turn uh, that it's trouble on every hand. But can you trust me? Can you put your hand in my hand? And when it seems like there's silence in your world, can you keep praying? When you feel like there's no strength in your body, can you keep praising? When you feel like you can't go on, can you pick your foot up one more time and take another step? You could be one step away from your miracle. You could be one step away from your deliverance. You could be one step away from God showing up and bringing you out. Thousand yards, I don't know how many steps it took. But I can almost hear a blind man say, one more step. One more step. One more step. One more step. I can't see it. Don't know how I'm going to get there. But one more step. Come on, help me get there. Come on, I can assure you. If he had somebody help him, he probably would say, hey, come on. you got to help me get there. Whatever it takes, push through the crowd. If we stumble, that's okay. Just get me to the pool. Because in the pool is where my miracle is. In the pool is where my miracle is. Somebody in this house tonight, you just got to stand up in your spirit and say, God, I'm going to the pool. I'm going to, that's where my miracle's at. I'm going to the pool. Regardless of what people say. Regardless of how they look at me. I'm getting to the pool. You know why? Because people don't know what I'm going through really in my mind. People don't know what's going on in my world. But can I tell you, you know that you're the only one that can make the difference if you'll just keep on. Amen. Keep on walking. One more step. Every step you take, you're a step closer to victory. Every step you take, I'm one step closer to my breakthrough. Can we lift our hands in this house right now? Hallelujah. Come on, I gotta get to Jesus whatever it takes. Come on, I gotta get to Jesus whatever it takes. Come on, somebody's dependent on me. Come on, somebody's dependent on you. One more step. One more step. Come on, I just gotta keep stepping. I just got to keep walking. God's treat that your people tonight. Come on, I know the journey. Sometimes it gets long. I know sometimes the battle, it gets tough. But can I tell you, sir, somebody's depending on you. Can I tell you, ma'am, somebody's depending on you. However you got to get there, just get there. However you got to do it, just do it. But you've got to break through. Maybe somebody's spouse is depending on them tonight. Maybe somebody's son or daughter is depending on you tonight. And if you give up before the pool, then what's it going, what's going to happen to your family? If you give up before you get to the pool, what's going to happen in your world? If you give up before you get to the pool... Come on, there's always going to be a reason why we can't. But God's given us the power to pull through. God's given us the power to make it. God's given us the power to walk in victory. I don't know who I'm pulling for tonight, but I'm telling you, you can't give up here. You can't stop here. Come on, I feel the weight. I feel the weight. I feel it. Come on, you feel like you're so suppressed. It feels like there's no way you're going to die. You're going to perish under the pressure. I've come to tell you tonight, you don't have to perish in the pressure. Come on, you don't have to give up where you are. 
Come on, there's people around you that say you can make it. There's people surrounding you that say you can pull through. There's people surrounding you tonight that says you don't have to die in your dilemma. But you've got to make that, that step. You've got to make that choice. I'm getting up from where I am. I'm not going to perish here. I'm getting up from where I am and I'm going to take the steps that I need to take to get to the pool because that's where my miracle is. Every miracle in the Word of God, every deliverance, required an action on the part of the participant. Everything that we get. Let me tell you something tonight. The only gift that God's going to give you is the Holy Ghost. But after you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to fight to keep it. You're going to have to fight temptation. You're going to have to fight discouragement. You're going to have to fight the oppression of the enemy. Because once you feel, you know, just because you get the Holy Ghost, it doesn't give you the superhuman power that seems like everything's just going to fall around you. You're going to have to work to keep the Holy Ghost. Because the devil don't want you full of the Spirit of God. Because every time he looks at you, he sees the glory that he used to reflect. And he says, if I can rob them of that, if I can rob them of their revelation, if I can rob them of their identity, if I can rob them, I'll rob them. Whatever I've got to do, I'm going to do it. But it's going to take a man and a woman that's going to say, God, I stand up and I'm going to be what you call me to be. I'm going to fight to my family saved. I'm going to fight to my community saved. I'm going to fight until we see revival. I'm done tonight. Would you please cover the music? The steps that lead to my victory, to my healing, to my breakthrough, to my family being saved. Whatever it is tonight in this building that you need, would you stand across this congregation tonight with me?